When people lose an hour of sleep, that the next day, like it's instant. The next day, heart attacks go up by 22%. Car crashes go up by 20 something percent. Like all these things go up. And then it's the exact opposite when they gain an hour of sleep. Heart attacks go down by 20 something percent. Car crashes, crime, like it's crazy. Welcome everyone to this episode of Build Stuff, Be Kind. We have a good friend of mine, Zach Collins, who is a real estate developer, investor, entrepreneur, doing some incredible uh, Airbnbs and, and developments down in Roatan. Uh, and uh, excited to have you here today and talk about all these adventures and, and developments that you're working on, dude. Yeah, excited to be here. It's about time. We've it been is. Talking yeah, about this for a minute. We have. Yeah, we've been, <laughs> we've been talking about this for a long time. We're finally really leaning into more and more of the podcast and doing it more consistently. And so stoked we could get you. Yeah. In well, the mix. Good. I got a lot more to talk about now. Than that's I did good. Back then, there so. we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Works out. <laughs> so, dude, talk to me about. Uh, we were just chopping it up before we we yeah. kicked off the episode. Talk to me about um, Roatan, how this came about, what even, where even is Roatan? <laughs> what you know, for people who may not know, like, what is it about this place that's that's taken from from what I can see a big chunk of your time and energy um, in building out these houses and these properties down in Roatan? Yeah, you know, it's awesome, and it's funny because. I'd never heard of Roatan before I started investing there mm -hmm. almost. Um, how it happened was I was developing here in Arizona. Yeah. And I had a contractor buddy that I'm working with, you know, just not not even doing work with, but have just met a couple times. Mm -hmm. And, and um, he just kept kind of disappearing all the time. <laughs> I was just like, where are you going? Yeah. You know, turns out he's going to Roatan and he'd been mm. developing down there, investing down there for 15 years. Wow. And so this was, you know, what, three or four years ago. Yeah. And, um, he, so his story, which is kind of cool was he, he built for Hilton was it Hilton or one of the big names, I think mm. it was Hilton and, uh, for years. And that's what his dad did too. And so he would travel the world and they would send him out to a site and say, Hey, is this somewhere we should nice. put one? And, um, they sent him out to Rotan back in like 2000 or something. Mm. And back then Rotan was nothing. It was very, very undeveloped. It's just an Island, you know, yeah. it was beautiful, but nothing more than that. Hardly even had an airport and, mm. you know, couldn't really not super accessible. And so um, he's like, he told him like, no, I was not ready for yeah. Hilton, but um, I like it. So he bought some property mm. and he has properties everywhere, all over the yeah. world. I mean, in all the islands over there, um, he had a bunch of property in Belize, Costa Rica. He has houses in Hawaii and Washington, California, Dang. you know, he's got yeah, them yeah. everywhere. He was planning to retire in Belize and just live the rest of his mm. days eventually. And, um, so what happened was he fell in love with Roatan and it started to grow and it started to develop and like he loved mm. the island, loved the people, loved everything, loved how safe it was. So he ended up selling all his Belize property, all his Costa Rica mm. property, all, I mean, he's selling everything well, everywhere. And I mean, he has millions and millions of dollars worth of real estate now in Roatan. Wow. And so that was his story. And I was like, that's interesting. Like yeah. someone who's willing to do all that, Totally. They, they built up their whole life, all these properties mm. now just dump it into one island. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, come check it out. I have some a cool opportunity if you want to invest. I'm like, all right, great. So two weeks later, I hopped on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> and before I left Wait. the island, I'd bought my first lot. It was that easy. Like I yeah. got there. I was like, all right, I yeah. see the potential. Totally. It's awesome. Amazingly beautiful island, right? Mm -hmm. So that was great. The, the water's basically glow you yeah. know it's that turquoise you know like that mm. maldives style yep. glowing water it's like beautiful um everything about it was great and and just like he said the culture the people they're mm. amazing yeah and so i was like great let's give it a go he gave me a great you know opportunity mm -hmm. with a lot and pretty soon i bought the lot next door <laughs> pretty soon i built a house on that first lot yeah. um 
Next thing you know, I now have a 10 acre development, a residential development that I'm working on. Wow. It's called Sunset Vistas, um, 40 lots. So we're just, Dude. we're, we're, um, we already got all the lots, you know, yeah. um, entitled and ready to go. We've cut a few of the uh, lots, mm-hmm. a, a few level pads for people to build on, sold 10 of them, um, nice. you know, and just starting to move them. So, uh, it's awesome. And yeah. then I literally just closed a week or two ago on another two and a half acre development more towards the middle of the Island. Mm. And then, um, I'm, I'm doing a couple other random things. One thing that's really cool is I'm, I'm a part of a small hotel Oh, cool. that we're building. So nice. me and this buddy who got me into Rotan, um, we're, we're building this small hotel, 22 rooms. Cool. Um, it's got a really awesome pool and bar um, yeah. called Shells that's just opened up. And so Dope. we're just building out the rooms now, but the actual, like all the amenities for the hotel are, are already functioning in there. Uh, nice. So it's a bar restaurant. We have big old pool and two huge hot tubs with a sunken in bar. So oh, you can sick. sit, you know, yeah. a little swim up bar that you can just yeah, chill yeah. and order drinks or food or whatever. Mm. Um, and then we're putting in, like I said, the 22 rooms. We're going to have some rooms for, um, like cold plunges and saunas. Oh, dope. And then uh, yeah. we'll have one big old like turf area that's going to be shaded and, and covered, but it's, it's more for like a, it's more like a recreational area, but cool. um, what I'm doing with it is I'm running fitness retreats out of it. Oh, dude, Fitness and wellness, that's right? Sick, yeah. So we have an indoor gym as well. Mm. And then we'll have an outdoor gym yeah. where more functional style workouts are going, you know, out on dude. that turf area. Yeah. And then um, we'll have the cold plunges, the saunas. But the biggest thing is, like, get people out in nature, man. You know what I mean? Get them out away from their phones. Get them away from work. Get them away from all that. And spend a week or two hiking, snorkeling, paddle boarding through mangroves, like, handline fishing dude. dude we'll just we'll go out into the mangroves yeah, yeah, and like sick. handline fish grab you know yeah. catch some barracuda and some snapper and, wow. and go grill it up for lunch like that's amazing just like getting in nature you yeah know? um and then uh, i've partnered with this guy who's you know dedicated his life to fitness and stuff and dude. and and he's he's awesome. helping run run like the programming for the event yeah, and stuff dude. exactly That's so sick. he's just you know he's he was played in the nfl nice and then he got out and just was like dude fitness is where it's at yeah. like i i love this I, i'm and he's good at it yeah. so knows what he's doing his name's jarell mm. and um so he's gonna be running the workouts we'll be dude. we'll be working people out twice a day That's but sick. then like the rest of the time you're gonna be just having the time of your life yeah like literally you're gonna be Doing Dude, everything sounds... you'd want to do. It's like the best vacation you can go on. Yeah. But while you're doing it, you're you're getting out in nature. You're working out. You're eating well. We cook mm. for you th- all three meals. Dude, sign clean me up. for I'm, you. I'm, I'm you know, in. Dude, sign me oh, up, it's, bro. It's gonna be a blast. <laughs> it really is gonna yeah. be like the no, best vacation so you sick. do. Yeah. And then every night we'll kind of have like a come together and learn moment Dope. where yeah. it's like, hey, hey, tonight let's focus on like how important is sleep mm. and how to sleep better. Dude. All right. How important is cold plunges and saunas? What are the benefits of those? You know, Dude, I know. and we'll let you try them out while you're here. A guy that has a <clears throat> sleep coach, David Meltzer, has a sleep coach. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, he's like, yeah, ten years. He's like, I'm the best at sleep. Yeah. And it's like, and this dude is like, intent, like, doing a million things all the time. And he's like, no, sleep. He's like, I train to sleep. It, Dude, it's crazy. Man. I'm terrible well. oh yeah no i mean that's seriously probably <laughs> one of the things that we need most yeah these days. honestly i yeah. mean I, I i've listened to a lot of like i did a master i listened to or watched a master yeah. class with i'm not, always blank on his name i think his name's matt or something he's mm. just i think he's like this british like guy this. who like is the top sleep scientist oh, in the world sick. right yeah and like i'm so intrigued by it because he like the stuff he says are insane mm. like he's like we have we have the biggest um like research study in the world that happens twice a year, every year. It's called daylight savings. Seriously. He's like, you look at numbers so true. before and after. Yeah. So he's like, when, when people lose an hour of sleep, mm-hmm. that the next day, like it's instant. The yeah. next day, heart Productivity. attacks go up by 22%. Car crashes go up by 20 something percent. Like all these things go up. Wild. And then it's the exact opposite when they gain an hour of sleep. Heart attacks go down by 20 something percent. What car crashes, thing? crime. Like it's crazy. That's insane, dude. And then, you know, we have like. And yet we're still doing it. And we're still, and we still reason. just like caffeinate 
the crap out of ourselves and yeah. <laughs> never sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, yeah. I do it too. No, I try to I like, ever since then, it's like, yeah. He's like, don't have any caffeine after two mm -hmm. and try not to have any sugar after two or three. Yeah. And like, I'm like, I can't do any of that. But I can like try, you know what I mean? <laughs> try your best. You got, you I got, try my best. You've got a newborn. Yeah. And kid, like, yes. I got, I got four uh, under five. I'm not but doing yeah, much dude, of sleep. Dude, you I, can't, you're not sleeping much of the day. Caffeine dude, is so. on the earth for a purpose, I think. No but, that's, yeah. <laughs> but, but I try to like, the other big thing is don't have any caffeine like within at least an hour of waking up. A lot of people wake up, yeah, they have their morning coffee I've immediately, heard, you know? I've heard that, like... And so, like, I try yeah. to wait at least a couple yeah. hours, then I'll pound some caffeine, and I yeah. try to stop by two in the afternoon. Yeah. So, it yeah, has... So it, 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 little things do make a big difference, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, and then he has, all, you know... But anyways, we're kind of getting on a weird sleep tangent. No, I love it. <laughs> that, that's what this <laughs> but, show's all about, dude. All, this is the but, show uh, of tangents. Dude. Yeah, dude. Um, I love it. But well, that's what that's but that's the kind of stuff that we'll be yeah, doing dude. at the retreat, right? And so Roatan, you're gonna be like blown away by its beauty. I mean, when I take people there, it's insane. Yeah. Um, how you know, I mean, when we get people down there to look at property, it's mm -hmm. an 80% close rate oh, I'm, of I'm buying sure, properties because yeah. the second they see it, they're like, All right, get yeah. sign me up, you know. And so um, yeah, and it's, it sounds it's awesome. like it's only gonna get like easier from an accessibility standpoint from a like i'm sure more and more flights will start like yeah that sort of thing totally and it's and it's come a long way it's super accessible now i mean yeah. you can get direct flights straight to the island from oh, from houston dallas uh miami atlanta oh, new nice. york yeah um all sorts of places soon to be southern california oh cool and so um for for us here in phoenix yeah. it's a one hop right you yeah. you go straight to houston or dallas but you're in the island you're on the island in less than seven hours yeah. every, you know, easily. And totally. it's, and it's a little like one hour layover. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Cause you split it up into two, two and a half mm. hour flights and that's yeah, it. Yeah, That's true. And it's like, dude, a two and a half hour flight's easy to yeah, do. That's easy. And so it's really accessible. I mean, yeah. you just, you just do a little layover yeah. and get straight to the Island. Yeah, that's um, nice. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, and I mean, all the major airlines fly there now. Yeah. So there's multiple from each airline nice. flying in every day. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's really come a long way That's, from not having anything to now having everything, you know, it's, and so, yeah, it's growing like crazy. Dude, we're we're kind of in a really crazy time on the island. Yeah. Which is cool. cool. Talk so, to me about, um, I mean, you, you talked about going down there and, and from two weeks of deciding to go down there, going down there and basically buying a lot. Talk to me about the mentality you have around taking risk. <laughs> I'm way more risky than I think most people I know. <laughs> and that's the honest truth. <laughs> I really like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I must just have a lot of trust in my gut. Mm -hmm. That's really it. I just, you know, obviously like I try to do as much homework as I can. Yeah. Like that's the big, you know, I mean, you always got to do the homework. You got to do, you know, mm. um, but I'm not a, like, I don't count things out because they sound hard Mm. or like you know or not a lot of people are doing them yeah. or something like that right i mean there's a lot of people that are like oh man that sounds amazing but like yeah. i don't you know i, I don't want to totally you know and that's where that's what row 10 was for me i was like this sounds almost too good to be true yeah. i better like check it out and you know also sure. so i did some research and then i went down there and i mm. saw it with my eyes and i was yeah. like okay, this might be just really awesome. Instead yeah. of too good to be true, it might just be really, really good. Totally. And a lot of people would still just be like, no, nah, it's foreign, no, nah, you mm -hmm. know. But, you know, once again, you do your research and you find out like, okay, it's foreign, but you own the deed to the property. Mm -hmm. You own title ship. Yeah. That's a big deal. Like totally. you, you go invest in somewhere like Mexico, you have to sign a long land lease yeah. and it doesn't really mean much, you know. Totally it's not but row it's and you own the property you yeah. literally own it and and that's a really cool thing so then mm -hmm. you know and then you start to find out like their laws protect your property like crazy mm -hmm. i mean you know you can't pierce the corporate veil there you set up a little holding corporation on the island to hold nice. all your properties in and like nobody yeah. can even touch them yeah. so it's really really like you know it's just doing some research and then yeah, yeah. once you've done the research you just have at it you know I, that's really oh, like you know I'm like hey if if I can if I can stomach the bad then like, totally. you know why why not go for it yeah you can check enough boxes like okay yes yeah. yes like all right let's let's go let's figure it out yeah 
And like one thing I try to do, and I have a couple people in my life that I know are, are gonna are gonna like try to poke holes. Or, yeah, try to poke holes mm-hmm. to say the least, right? <laughs> you know? And so yeah. I take it to them. Nice. And if every like almost every big decision, I take mm-hmm. it to these few people and they'll poke holes every yeah. time they do every single time it's not like you know mm-hmm. what i mean and then if i'm still good with it i go for it you yeah. know what i mean because it's like all right you know i've i've seen the worst that i that people can think of about mm-hmm. this idea yeah and i'm still good with the idea so do you, do you enjoy like i mean clear, you're, you're obviously taking it to them so you're choosing but do you are you someone who kind of likes to be backed into that corner or like kind of really lay it all out and put yourself in a position to like like to me that sounds like you're kind of like yes try to poke holes and let me really prove myself or prove you know that i know what's up kind of thing yeah i you know it's more i don't i'm very i think i I think i'm a little unique in that i don't care what people Mm. think much i think it's a very common thing to care what other people think of you for sure and like you know, and I think, I mean, I, I attribute it to, I mean, I just growing up, like I, you know, we were, I was always taught like, just don't, don't get offended by anything. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, you can't offend me. You literally can't, you can try all you want. You can't do it. <laughs> and it's like, so like, I don't care what people think. So I, I wouldn't say I'm going to like try to prove myself Got to it. anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say I'm going to prove it to myself that it's mm. a good deal. Yeah. And then I do it. So like make sure I'm not missing something or. Yeah. Like yeah, a lot of people cool. like search for that like gratification. I, I don't know. I mean, oh, social cool. media is a big like uh, like example. I wasn't on social media for over a decade mm-hmm. and didn't blink an eye at it. Yeah. Didn't even care, you know. And and even when I have it now, it was only just for business purposes. Yeah. And and I I have a hard time doing any social media. I don't really yeah. care for it. But like, I don't need. You know, I don't know. I guess I've never yeah. grown accustomed to like getting likes and getting yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> like totally. I've just kind of done what I've wanted to do. Yeah. You know, that's cool. I think that that p- plays a role in the decisions you've made and the risk you've taken. Because it's like you're you're really, uh, I'm sure, able to trust your gut even more because you you're, you're internally motivated versus yeah. externally motivated. Well, yeah, my yeah. I mean, trusting your gut is. Yeah, it's pretty much how I make decisions. Mm. And that's good and bad because yeah. I'm not the smartest guy in everything that I do. You know what I mean? I, I should probably sure. listen to other people more. But to be honest, like, that's how you learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot of hard yeah, lessons yeah. <laughs> because totally. I keep trusting my gut. But yeah, I've learned a lot, yeah. you know. And, yeah, you know, come a long way. But, you know, I think uh, I kind of think back on some things. Mm. I don't know. It's funny, cool. but... But um, yeah, I've I've lost a lot of money and deals and stuff, mm. and I've also had a lot of wins. So yeah, but yeah, along the way and figure it out. What what um, you know, when you let's talk about uh, you know, these various projects. You know, we talked about a little bit before. Um, your approach to even with your social media with various projects you have with the the fitness retreat this alignment with like key partners to fill gaps yeah in areas that you really maybe don't have um a huge strength or or just don't want to shoulder that task talk to me about like the mentality and how you've structured uh partnerships and put people in in places to fill those gaps for you yeah um you know it's funny because yeah i mean before like you know we kind of started we were talking a little bit about like team work mm-hmm. and teams and to, to me i'm like i don't really have a team mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i more have just a bunch of partners mm-hmm. um and it's for that reason i want them to feel as motivated as i am mm-hmm. on something yeah and i just know that you know, if you have like employees and stuff, they're not going to work as hard as you yeah. are. And that's, they shouldn't. Yeah. Right. And so, um, I just, um, whenever I, yeah, whenever I do anything, I do 
try to look for who's going to be the best fit to mm. fill, you know, the needs of what I'm doing. So, yeah. you know, I mentioned the retreat I brought on Jarrell. Mm. He is a fitness guru, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at the guy, you know, he's got it down. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he has, I mean, he has a program where he writes all your, he, he has like all your, um, like he'll do a full diet plan and he'll give you like ingredient lists and like Dude, and sick. recipes and stuff yeah. like so it's not just like he's just going to like get you in the gym and work you mm. until you collapse he's yeah. like he knows his stuff so you know as it, it was like okay i have been getting more fit i you know i've always been semi fit i mm. you know i did sports always i was a personal trainer in college mm. not that that means much but um you know and then i and then i kind of let myself go last year and mm. i I got right back into it and really like dug in with the fitness. Uh, you know, I lost 30 something pounds, mm. but I'm stronger than I was yeah. then. I'm like really, you know, turn it around. Um, but like, so I kind of know, you know, I know what I'm talking about, yeah. but I'm not like the expert. That's not totally. like, and so, um, it's something I want to be a part of, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be the expert on it. I need yeah. a Jarrell to take it over and be like, okay, here's, you totally. know, I'm going to make sure it's the best retreat yeah possible in that sense and then my strengths were hey i have roatan i'm building mm -hmm. a small hotel for this that's like designed for this totally um i have very good connections on the island mm. so with private chefs who are insanely yeah. good um i have my own private like tour guide on the island nice. so he's got a boat he'll take us out Sick. fishing snorkeling yeah. he'll take us out to go hang out with nurse sharks whatever right he yeah. knows that he's born and raised on the island knows that's it dope. inside yeah. and out um, so I have all the connections mm -hmm. and the property and the, you know, all that, that's my strength. Yeah. And I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to totally. take on like programming yeah. workouts and, uh, you know, coming up with the meals plans and mm -hmm. like, I have somebody who's better at that and will always be better at that yeah. than me. Why wouldn't I just put him in that place and yeah. partner up? I think that's such so, an, an important mindset because I, it's like, I struggle with that oftentimes where it's like, well, I can do it. I'll figure it out. I'll learn yeah. it. I'll do it. And it's like, but the times where I've like found that person, plugged them in, they're always way better, way more like yeah. qualified or understanding or just have a different approach. That's, that's so much more embedded in whatever that process is. Yeah. You know, than me trying to scrape it together and just, get it done and that's the thing like and i think that's a, a, an important mentality to have is like i can figure it out mm. like a lot of people are like eh, yeah, yeah you know ah, no it's that sounds hard and they just don't even think about it yeah because it sounds hard and i think that's important to like have that mentality like i can figure that out yeah. and that's how i am too right but at totally. a certain point it's like you figure it out to a point mm. and then and then well you know once it's like okay this is becoming real mm. you need to like find the right person right yeah because and 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 it really comes down to like all right how important is your time mm -hmm. towards that one thing and also like is it going to be better if somebody else does it you know mm. yeah it's going to be better with Jarrell doing it than me totally so okay i need Jarrell in and yeah. i could have figured it out i could you know yeah. i could have spent time coming totally. up with all that stuff and but put the plan together yeah you could check the boxes but it's it's different when you're just checking the boxes versus someone who's just like passionate understands yeah. it is going to really elevate you know what that is yeah and i you know i figured it out to a point i had yeah i was building mm -hmm. you know i was building this hotel and i was getting my fitness in mm -hmm. check and i knew that i wanted to keep my fitness going because yeah. it's helped the rest of my life totally and so i was like okay i want to do a fitness retreat because mm -hmm. that'll keep me in check and with my fitness yeah. and everything and um so i took it all the way to like i had the retreat like mm. there ready to go yeah and then i said okay i need to find the right person to run this totally. thing now you know so yeah. it was like i did figure it out to a point but yeah. once it became like okay somebody else needs to do a better job than that's me sick. i brought on jarell yeah so that's kind of how you know i've mm. i've partnered with people in all sorts of real mm. estate deals um and things like that like that's yeah I don't have a problem with partnering with people, yeah. you know, I think, and I think it just comes down to not getting greedy. Yeah. It's hard to not get greedy when you can like, totally. be like Oh, I can make this much. Yeah. But and I can do it all myself. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's such an important is really like checking yourself of like, 
and yes, but how much stress and how much everything and and then what like it's like the untold value of someone really driving it and really making it uni- yeah. a unique experience and a positive yeah thing or or bringing their expertise to it will just compound yeah yeah whatever that is um we talked about you know risk taking and 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 you know the decisions and the priorities how do you how do you keep your priorities in check or or what what do you what process do you go through to really prioritize all the different kind of projects and businesses and make sure you're focusing on the key areas that are really pushing things forward yeah that's a good question because i i kind of do have like a lot of random things going on um yeah you know it it really is like okay what's the most pressing Mm -hmm. do that first you know, it's, you kind of have to be organized. You know, you, I've seen a bunch of those videos of people like, okay, write down your mm-hmm. top 10 goals. And then, you know, which are the top most important? Mm-hmm. All right. Erase the rest. Do only those yeah. three. Um, you know, there, there's definitely a lot of like important concepts to that. Like make sure you're focusing on the right stuff because all the rest, you know, I mean, you, you got to get the, yeah. you know, the important things done. Um, and I am, I mean, aside from, you know, doing some, all these Rotan developments, fitness retreat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have some, you know, I'm always trying to do drum up projects here in Arizona. For sure. Um, I started a, a prefab home company mm-hmm. that's, you know, kind of been fun, but there's a lot to that too. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, it is a lot of things for one person to do. Mm. Luckily, like my, my ADD brain won't let me do one thing yeah, for one day. For sure. Right. I mean, I couldn't just sit down and do one thing anyways. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it works totally. because I'm like, hey, I'm going to focus on these yeah. three things and then I'm going to move on to these three yep. things. And then I'm going to, you know, do some push ups and then try to do some more because I can't even like think yeah. straight after, totally. and, you know. Um, but yeah, it really just comes down to, yeah, making sure you, you, you know, you know which you know what's most important mm-hmm. and and you know it's sometimes it's hard to decide yeah you know this Juggling or that act for sure but um and it, it, you know what i've learned is a lot of it can come down to making sure the um making sure you have somebody else mm. in you know in control of you know making things get done in certain yeah. things right my prefab home company i have um three uh, three other partners mm. and they all are awesome they yeah. all have their very they're very strong in certain points totally and so for that it's like i don't need to worry too much about things getting done mm. in that company yeah. because my you know my part is like only every once in a while do they need me to be really focused on that mm. and so i can kind of say okay is there anything that needs to be done? Yeah. Probably not. Let them kind of hang, handle yeah. their, their parts right now. Okay. What's the next important mm-hmm. thing? Okay. I have this company, you know, does this need to be done right now? Yeah. And then, okay, does this need to be done right now? And mm-hmm. then I just go from there. Yeah. And so it's, it, I do, I, you know, I feel like myself kind of, you know, going up and down, up and down mm-hmm. with different companies, like, you know, one For week sure. or, you know, there'll be a couple of weeks where I'm focused strictly on like, one project totally mostly you know and then like i'll sprinkle in a few things Mm. here and there um from my other companies and then you know the next couple weeks i won't even think about that project for you know totally and so i totally fluctuate and i don't think that's typical i don't know i think a lot of people can just like sit down and focus Mm. and just hit it hard and um i think that's a good way to do it to be honest I just, my brain won't allow me to do that. (laughs) Yeah. And I, you know, and so, and maybe that's where the uh, importance of partnerships has come up in my life is because I haven't been able to just sit down and focus and do one Mm. thing. I kind of hop to multiple things. Yeah. And in order to do that, there's, you know, I don't have enough bandwidth to do it all myself. So it's like, all right, let's bring on a partner for this. Let's do this with somebody, you know, and and it doesn't have to necessarily be like a partner in the company, Yeah, but it could be a partnership in some way. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Strategic partner, someone that can totally fill a gap. Yeah. Sure. Um, do you want to grab, do you need a drink? You want to grab a drink? You're good. 
No, no problem. <laughs> you're good. If, you, if you want to, you're, you're welcome. There's some drinks in the... Uh, you're fine, dude. Um, okay, let's talk... I want to talk about really the idea of um, kind of creating the life you dream of, of putting these pieces in place, like uh, almost a follow-up to... You know, we've ta- we talked about um, intuition and trusting your gut and kind of making yeah. these decisions. What would you say to people who are wanting to create a life they dream of or really follow that intuition or, or lean into things that they're curious about um, to start down that path? I would say, because, uh, yeah, I would say, like, be patient. Um, we want our, our ideal life right now and that's just hard. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, for years I was trying to do real estate, get Mm -hmm. things going, get some developments growing, get, you know, whatever. I didn't know where it was going to take me. I knew that I wanted to be developing and doing Mm -hmm. real estate in a sense and have my own, you know, my own, um, flexibility, like schedule wise, be able to travel be able to do mm-hmm. those things right and spend time with my family that's the yeah. most important thing i'm like i don't want to be working yeah, you yeah. know day in day in, you know day and night mm-hmm. and just you know not spend time with my family yeah. and, and not have time to do the things i want so um that's always been my focus mm-hmm. i've i've and so for as long as you know i've been out of college and like mm-hmm. really trying to get a career going i have focused on doing those things it's been 100 percent of my time has been Mm. trying to get real estate developments and and there's steps to it right i had to learn how to do real estate so i so i became a a commercial broker Mm. and then i did that for a little bit before i really ventured out to buying my first property yeah and um so it's kind of taken it's taken a lot of time Mm -hmm. and i'm definitely not there that's the thing like i'm not even close Mm. but i'm closer yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, all right, be patient because it's going to take time. But also, like, I've never veered from the path. I never, like, gave up and said, all right, I just better get a job. Yeah. Even though there's been times where I really wanted to. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It would been nice to have a salary. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell I'll you what. You, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. and so it's important to, like, stick to mm-hmm. it. And I've been extra lucky. That's mm-hmm. just the truth. I've been really lucky with a lot of different mm-hmm things connections and yep. things um also my wife you know right in college she started a little a company that mm-hmm. grew and was awesome totally. for us for a while yeah and that gave me a lot of freedom totally for years to like figure things out mm. so i didn't have to work a nine to five job yeah and so i had more time to figure things out so in that sense i'm a lot luckier than most yeah and um so i was able to kind of spend that extra time to figure things out yeah that's cool. um but that being said, like you don't want to just set aside your your goals and your dreams and your your lifestyle that you want. So even if you have a nine to five job, don't ever just put it on the back burner. You gotta mm-hmm. be, you know, you have to be proactive. You have to be active in, you know, trying to get it done. Yeah. Because it's not gonna get done by itself, totally. you know. And if you keep there's never mm-hmm. a better time to start than now, yeah. right? I mean, there's all those sayings that you hear, and it's just true. I mean, you yeah. you will make an excuse tomorrow if you make one today. <laughs> totally. You know? Yep. And so it's just never gonna happen unless you just start. And it just it just has to be something small. Mm. It's all about momentum. Yeah. I mean, really, that's all it is. Like get get momentum, then totally. keep and then do the next thing. Yeah. Then do the next thing. Dude. And like eventually you'll get to a point where you're like, okay, I don't need my job anymore. Yeah, yeah. But once again, be patient because yeah. if you do have a nine to five, you're not going to have as enough time on your hands to just like go crazy yeah. on something. I, I, I love yeah. that because we started the conversation with like, I discovered this thing two weeks later, I bought a property, you know, yeah. <laughs> of like, you know, that making was... that, making a quick decision. But, but I love kind of the full circle of that, of being patient, like find, you know, that you were able to make that decision quickly because I'd imagine the patience along the way of like, okay, this is a deal that I can really go all in on. And yeah. And that was years after I had started uh, yeah, that totally. I had been, you know, developing, mm. I've, I had bought, developed and sold properties by then here. Yep. 
Um, I had done, you know, two or three years of brokering commercial yeah. real estate before that. So, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, it did sound fast when you say it like that, but, like, it was years <laughs> totally. in the making. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, boom. Yeah. And then it's gotten, you know, and I even still feel like I'm, like, going too slow. Mm. You know, I'm still sure. impatient with it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just in the last couple of years, it's it actually, you know, I look back on it, I'm like, okay, I actually have grown quite a bit yeah. over there. And I've, I've dumped every, I don't have anything here mm. right now. I've dumped everything in yeah. a row of 10, just like, you know, it's cool. Uh, my buddy Scott yeah. did. He, and I was like, I did the same thing. Yeah. I didn't have nearly as much as he did to dump sure. into it. But, yeah. um, yeah, no. So that was years in the making, you know, I had to really like figure things out, totally. build up some cash mm. from deals, um, you know, figure out how to put a deal together. Yeah. And that was like the biggest thing was like, I, I had spent at least a year and a half or two mm. of going to lunch with somebody three to four times a week and presenting deals that I put together myself yeah. that were total crap. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, and I didn't totally. know it at the time, but I would get there and they're like, yeah, but you're like not even considering this <laughs> and this. And I'd be like, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Totally. Yeah. And I'd be like, man, I was like hundred percent on board with doing this project yeah. yesterday and now I don't even want to do it, totally. you know? And it was like that over and over and over again. That's it. Until that. eventually one worked. Yeah. And what was crazy is even that one that worked, <laughs> that first one, everyone I took it to told me not to do mm. it. That was a weird thing. Yeah. I, I just, but I was just like, I got it. Like, you got to do it. Yeah. It's a little risky, mm. but like, if yeah. it works out, totally. you know, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how my brain works. Like, yeah, yeah but what if it works yeah. out? <laughs> and so find a way. Everyone told me not to, yeah. but I was not, not everyone. There's a yeah, couple yeah. people, you know. But, um, and you know, I had a lot but of I think help at that, it, yeah, but... at some point you've got to go all in, you've got to risk it. Like even, you know, like, uh, I love like have a side hustle, do, do things on the side, learn, grow, taste things and test. But like, there's something that happens when you flip that switch and you just go all in and you take that risk or you totally. say, Hey, I'm going to figure it out. Like I've got enough knowledge or enough like momentum or whatever I need to just like, yeah do this thing and, and totally. then see where that takes us yeah and that was definitely the case and and um yeah it was kind of a riskier deal and looking mm. back on it now my first deal <laughs> was a you know i mean i would do it again in fact i'd still look for a deal like that again mm -hmm. i mean it worked so well yeah. but it was risky to people outside of, you know, what I was doing. And mm. that was the difference was yeah. I had kind of an insider's look at, that wasn't as risky. Yeah. Cause what it was is, I don't know if you ever heard of this, it's kind of a little real estate hack mm. <laughs> is, is I looked at, um, uh, the department of transportation, Arizona department, mm. you know, a dot, they sell properties all the time oh, totally. for cheap. Yeah. And so I was just, you know, I was scrolling, but the problem is, is, the way that you buy a property for them is a little risky mm. because you have to put in a 10% bid. And the second you put that in, they give you 30 days. They publish that yeah, so in everyone something. Everyone has an opportunity to. And they give you 30 days. That's it. And so oh, it's 30 days of due diligence. Yeah. And that's what scares people. <laughs> like, Because in yeah. real estate, you need at least 60. Totally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. you want at least 60 unless you're really, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and that's why everyone was like, don't do it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, totally. that's not enough time. Yeah. You don't even know. Cause we were going to have to rezone it mm. and, um, for it to even make sense. Yeah. Like it was a, it was a residential land, but it was only zoned for like nine lots or mm. something, you know? And, um, to make it work, it needed to be a multifamily deal. Yeah. Got it. And so I was like, okay, we we're going to have to rezone it, mm -hmm. get that approved, get a permit. That's all hard things. Totally. Um, you know, especially at the time, like it was a crazy time and yeah. the city wasn't like overly like just accepting every yeah. zone change, totally. uh, especially to multifamily. So it was a little bit risky because of that. But what people didn't really realize is my partner mm. talking about getting partners in the right yeah. place. My, my development partner here, he's like, he, he was the board for planning and zoning of Mesa mm. or, you know, nice. uh, he was the chair yeah. of planning and zoning. Um, and now he's currently still on the design review board. Oh, nice. Um, so like he has all the ins with the city totally, and he knows how all of them think. Mm. 
And he could do some research in the background yeah. before we even put in our bid to start that 30 days. Nice. And so we kind of had an idea that we'd be able to do yeah. it before we even started. Totally. And people kind of just would like see the deal and they'd be like, you only have 30 days, don't even think about yeah, it. You know, and that's sure. where it's kind of like, hey, yeah, but also mm -hmm. like I've done the research. Yeah. I have the connections and like, totally. you know, yeah, 30 days is fast. Mm. And then even that 30 days, it, you know, it, you could go to face face auction yeah, with somebody, yeah. which was scary. Oh, yeah. And so, which we did. And that's a funny story and, you know, mm. for another day. <laughs> but um, anyways, it's, you know, it was kind of like, I just had to kind of trust and it's, mm -hmm. and it's hard to trust your gut when you're just starting oh, yeah. and all these yeah. like veterans are telling you don't do it. <laughs> yeah. You got people who've done it for decades Yeah, yeah, for sure. and you're just like this new guy who's never done a deal. Yep. It's hard to be like, yeah, I'm just going to trust my gut totally. and do it, you know? And so, but, but the truth is, is like, that's where you have an edge mm -hmm. when you're starting out is that you can, t you know, you need to take risks. Yeah. The big dogs, they don't need to take risks. Totally. So they're not going to. Yeah, they took different risks early on as well, I'm sure. And then they get <laughs> yeah. you know, into like something that's more comfortable and, and more, or at least, you know, they're de-risking. Yeah. And, and that makes sense. And that's fine. But Yeah, it's fine for where they're at. Yeah. But to start out, guess yeah. what? You're not going to win a bid war against a big dog ever. Especially if it's low risk. It's yeah. Like they're on a, on they're on like a rolling. safe but great investment, Yeah, you're never going to win that as a starting out <laughs> totally. investor, right? Yeah. Or whatever. And so you're going to have to take the risk yep. on something that people don't really want. You're totally. going to have to find the hairy deal yeah. and make, make it, it something. And so it was kind of like, uh, that was kind of what needed mm. to happen for me yeah. to jumpstart my career. And then totally. we crushed it on that deal. It's like really great deal and mm. then you know that jump started me to every day everything else yeah that's but it. it did take that initial like okay everyone told me don't do it yeah i still think it's gonna work yep. so i'm gonna do it totally. you know that's kind of where it started like okay mm. present things to people that are gonna tell you not to do something yeah figure out if you still want to do it yeah. after that but you, you kind of find yeah use it as as kind of a testing ground to learn not necessarily put it on that person because no no one's yeah. going to know a deal or an opportunity or or your business for that matter better than you who's in it on the day-to-day -day. right yeah and yeah. you know i love that yeah so. uh dude so many solid nuggets uh so many ways for people to really start to think about risk differently or opportunities or create things that that maybe aren't that clear path or that clear and i think you know a big thing that i keep hearing people is like a lot of like listening a lot of like seeing you know being in tune and being curious about like even even you asking what this dude was doing when he'd leave and come back on this project you guys are working on together like that curiosity i think is a, a really powerful trait to really see what, what opportunities are there? Where can I find these deals? Where you got to I... be open to them, man. Like yeah. that's just, yeah, you got to be looking and you got to be open. Hmm. Rotan seemed like a, you know, like totally. a shot in the dark. Like everyone yeah, for years and, and like I got in. Mm -hmm. and it's funny because like I'm starting to get at a good place in Rotan. Mm -hmm. It was like when I started, like okay, I bought some lots, I bought some things mm -hmm. and, I would, and I would go to some family friends. I'd say, hey, why don't you buy one of these? It's going to be mm -hmm. worth a lot. Yeah. You know, how many did I sell? Not that many. Yeah. And now I've, you know, that that Sunset Vist is I've sold 10 lots mm. for double to triple what I offered it to them for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Within a totally. year, they could have doubled their money, made a hundred grand on a deal. Like, yeah. and I'm like, you know, it was just like taking that shot in the dark. Mm. Okay. But once again, like. Totally. I knew the guy who brought mm. me into Roatan. Yeah. I did some research on the legal side mm. of everything that made me comfortable. Yeah. I went to Roatan and I stood on the dirt. Totally. I stood on the land. I, I checked out the Island yeah. to see what, and I saw how much, I mean, you would not believe how much potential there is in Roatan and how fast it's growing right now. Really? And like, seriously, it's still like an insane time to get in. Yeah. I mean, I just bought two and a half more acres because yeah. I'm like everything I can. <laughs> Right totally. now, yeah, because it's like just it's just starting yeah. to explode. They just announced their third cruise ship port. Oh wow! They, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could. I mean, there's a lot of big names coming mm -hmm. to the island. Yeah. Marriott owns a piece of the nice. beach where I've been developing. 
Um, they just announced that um, Margaritaville, like five star resort there on the island. Nice. Um, there's some big names who I can't disclose who yeah. are investing in our properties. For sure. Maybe I'll tell you after the Thank podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> about. Sick. But um, it's kind of like been really cool wow. that like to to watch it just in the last like three years that I've been there. Yeah. But it all just started with me taking the risk that you know most people didn't want to yeah. do. And and once again, it's funny because I'm like, you know, I'm like, man, you could have made so much money just mm. by taking me up on that that first offer. Totally. You know, yeah. but. Yeah, 100%. it's just it's just it's just being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, really. I mean, it's kind of what it's come down to. I love it, dude. So many great things. We have uh, one question that we ask every guest at the end of the show, and we can we can discuss it at length or short or or <laughs> however. Um, but for you, Zach, what role has kindness played in building your success? That's huge, actually. Um, kindness has been, yeah, I mean, just being a good person has kind of been what's driven me to do everything I've mm. done because, and it kind of sounds cheesy, and you know, you can't asking that question, me saying that, <laughs> but I have a story behind it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, when I moved, so I did, you know, I was up in college mm-hmm. in Utah where we used to hang, yeah. and um, I came down, I was planning to go to medical school, actually. Mm. Um, I crushed it in college. I mm-hmm. was, you know, graduated cum laude. I had it hundreds of hours of research, totally. and published articles, blah, blah. Right. And I was ready for mm. medical school. I was going and, um, I was applying and, mm. you know, doing the thing and I had a year where I was going to be applying and then to interviewing and blah, blah. Yeah. So I came down, I just was like, I'll just come down to Arizona, you know, hang out, whatever. And I got a job selling, um, uh, credit repair mm. from Lexington law firm, you know, it's a law firm selling yeah. cre- credit repair. And I'm like, okay, hey, great. You know, I'll just make some money while I'm waiting. And I was decent at it. Mm. You know, they bring us in, in like groups of, you know, I think my group had like 30 or something people. And I was the top seller in the training program. Sick. And yeah. I came in, I was doing pretty good, you know, better than a lot of the guys who'd been there a while. I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, but it was selling these, this, you know, and credit repair is great. Everyone needs good credit. Yeah. So there's nothing. And that's kind of what I convinced myself of like, Hey, they need this. Mm-hmm. So I need to sell it to them. But the way I was selling it, like, you know, I'd be on a phone call with like, you know, the old lady who has mm. her last hundred dollars and, yeah. you know, I'm trying to convince her to give me her last hundred dollars to fix her credit because she'll never turn her life around. if She doesn't fix her credit. Yeah. I was just making a sale. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was at a family event and I was talking to my grandma, who's the number one, like nicest person, best person (laughs) I know and on planet earth, you Mm -hmm. know, just like the perfect person, you know? And, um, she's like, Oh, what are you doing? You know, I start telling her, Oh, I'm doing, you know, I'm a credit, credit, uh, consultant for Lexington, you know, whatever. Mm, And I help people fix their credit. She, you know, she's like, Oh, okay, great. You know, whatever. And then she, she goes, well, as long as you're just, you know, it, it sounds like you're just really helping people, mm. you know, <laughs> as long as you just mm. always remember, just, you know, as long as you're always helping people, how to mm. be, that's great. And so it sounds like you're doing a good thing, you know, and like, I literally went and quit the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh shoot, yeah, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just selling people out of the last hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. This sucks. And, and like, I've, you know, I, I kind of knew it all along, but it yeah. was like, yeah, anyways, I had, it was my job at the time. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So I quit. It's kind of weird. Cause mm. that, you know, then we went, you know, both, you know, I just went to kind of help my wife with her company at the yeah. time, which it was a good time to quit because it was the end of the year. We mm-hmm. had all the Christmas orders and all that stuff nice, to get yeah. done anyway. So, but I was just like, Ooh, yeah, no. And so from then on, I was like, okay, look, I got to like actually do what I believe in. Yeah. So that's been my whole thing. Like mm. I just do like, you don't really see me asking you to be a part of anything that I haven't done first mm. or I won't do with you yeah. and I won't be more like, you know what I mean? Like totally. I've gone and invested everything in yeah. Rotan and I'm asking, you know, I, if, you know, when people are asking totally. me about it, I'm like, Hey, you should buy it. Yeah. It's because I've done it. Yeah. I've bought it. I believe in it. Mm. And like, I just like, you know, I'm, I always have that in mind. Like, okay, I'm not just doing something for a buck. Yeah. I want to believe in it. Mm. And you know, it all comes down to like, I think that's like the best way of being kind is just bringing people in on stuff that mm. works. Right. I yeah. mean, like 
it's not that kind to sell somebody on something that they don't need or want mm. or, you know, can't, you know, can't benefit from. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, so for me, like, that's a big part of it. Like, okay, I'm benefiting from this. Mm. I want everyone to. Totally. I want you to do as well as I am mm. in these things. And so that's kind of, and and obviously, you know, so it's been a huge part of it. It's yeah. literally been since that, like, <laughs> that wake up call from my grandma, you totally. know, Shout little did she know, she didn't know she did that. But, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it was just like from then on, I'm like, okay, I got to actually believe in this mm. thing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be scamming people. I don't yeah. want to be doing any of that. And guess what? I've probably made less money because of it, mm. you know, to be totally honest. Yeah. I probably could have made a lot of money, you know, scamming yep. people and, and um i think that's always like short term long term yeah like, i think short term maybe long term i think it i think it plays out i think you're right yeah totally yeah and it's been yeah. yeah i mean i definitely could have used some more short term cash <laughs> Let me tell you. you know no it's doubt. like yeah i feel you for but sure. you know yeah it's yeah so it's been yeah it's been a big big part of my decision making and yeah you know and just trying to always do something that i'm proud of and can you know can be you know happy that i at least tried my best on this you know yeah. like that's been a huge huge part of it so i love it dude your story and the things you're doing are you know always just excited to chat with you and what you got going on and and what you're dreaming up next like there's <laughs> there's so many awesome things and where can where can people follow you uh find you follow along with all these cool things that you're working um on? yeah so you place? can find me on instagram um tiktok um let's see what else am i on i you know i have a website uh so if you go to my you know my instagram zach collins development sweet my handle okay um you can find me mostly there you can find me on linkedin yeah. but not as active there uh but yes yeah, so like that's you know those are the biggest spots and i'll be um there'll be a lot of you know expanding going on yeah. soon so um awesome. you'll be able to like yeah follow me there and then cool. you'll you'll be tuned into everything else awesome so. we'll we'll be sure to tag that in the the youtube and and yeah. the description and uh point people in your direction so they can follow along on all these cool things and see these amazing property i mean i've seen photos of your houses down there and one of these days i'll get down there with yeah, you yeah we gotta we'll get you down there you'll love check it. it out so maybe we'll do a podcast b2 down hey, in you just uh, let me know when we'll episode two together down in rotan that's That'd be right sick. um well dude such a pleasure having you in and and learning about what you have going on and the mindset and the approach that you have to doing all these rad things. I know I've learned a lot and just a lot of ideas of of how to push myself in 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 various projects or ideas that I have and and I'm sure those tuning in as well. So thank you all for listening. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and comment uh, your favorite part of this episode uh, so we can keep bringing on great people like Zach. Uh, we'll see you next time.